actuellement. Uh, uh, thank you for, uh, for the uh, invitation in, uh, to uh, uh, special thanks to uh, uh, my friend Salim, Dr. Lalu, for this uh, continuous initiative. I'm sure many, many of you guys are behind it. Um, well, one, the thing that I have in, uh, um, uh, in mind is uh, what I would hope to be a series of, uh, of discussion going in various levels of, uh, of um, cardiac electrophysiology. And I use this term intentionally. I know typically in some parts of the world, especially in the French language, you call it different is uh, arrhythmia. Uh, but I prefer uh, just the word cardiac electrophysiology uh, just because of a something that I will mention the descriptive. Um, anyway, so um, I feel very, um, uh, very honored to be amongst uh, all of you guys uh, uh, today. I did my training indeed uh, uh, right there in, in Algiers. I'm originally from, uh, uh, you know, and in, in, um, in uh, Algiers before I joined the, uh, the, uh, the specialty. And uh, obviously the, the, the way it goes in the U.S. is uh, you go through internal medicine, then you do general uh, cardiology with intervention, then you sub specialize in electrophysiology um, if you if you wish. Well, um, the 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 main thing is really the um, the electrophysiology of the of the, of the arrhythmias. The uh, again, I'll I'll stay. I'll stick to the um, the word cardiac electrophysiology or EP. Or hear me uh, hear uh, you know say the word EP. Uh, before I continue, I really, really would like to, this to be an interactive. I mean, I really would like to know each one of you, and I want it to be as interactive as possible, meaning uh, you can stop me, you can, you know, um, just ask questions during, during the presentation. I will not be offended. I'm coming here to relax with you guys and talk with you. Uh, I'm not talking to you. So I want it to be, so it kind of gives me an idea of uh, where, where we are at. Um, my hope, uh, and I know every time I, uh, I present, you know, typically there's different levels of audience from sometimes uh, medical students to residents, fellows, advanced fellows, uh, and obviously, you know, all the professors in the audience. My goal is always to speak to the, the people, that, the, to, the, to the lowest. So that if it's, it's too simple, Please bear with me, and then we will we will build from this, uh, inshallah. The the obviously when I chose the word, you know, when I, when I was invited to give this uh, to give this talk, I didn't have in mind one talk, unless you guys you know decide otherwise. Like I said before, it's very easy to put all sort of you know rhythm and complex maps and show you how we got it and how we stopped the arrhythmia, how we intervened. And uh, everybody claps. Uh, that's not my goal at all. Uh, it's not my goal. My goal is just try to build the 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 cornerstone, the small blocks of electrophysiology, uh, and then slowly build from it. For example, I'll give an example. When I when I started my training in cardiology, um, I was heavily because that's the program. It's heavily intervention. So I was very happy in a cath lab. You would do all sort of intervention from obviously the coronary peripheral, you know mitral valve, triple A, with hepatic valve, you know, whatever, anywhere that goes, uh, you know, the um, stenting or valve issues or structural heart disease, we used to do it. But really, really electrophysiology uh, started hitting me when I was uh, we having a lecture with Dr. Akhtar, you might know him, you might not, he's passed away now. Uh, he was the guru, one of the three people in, in, in the world that really started electrophysiology with uh, Demado, and Josephson, um, so he would he would you know they, uh, put a one slide. I kid you not, one rhythm. This is it. One ECG, not even ECG. It's just a simple, uh, brief uh, rhythm strip. And we would spend hours. I kid you not, hours. Uh, so it, he was very intimidating, very deep, one of all top professor. But I never cared. There's some people just very afraid to talk. But during his presentation, I never cared. I would just, when it, my first day, I almost got in trouble uh, just speaking up and looking at the, because he would just put the poster and just, you know, the, the, uh, the rhythm and he just um, lay back and just watch us. One thing 
And there's a reason why I'm telling you this. Uh, one thing, so the first day I mentioned, I think this is, I think it's an RVO TVT, you know what I said, and he stopped me, he said, no problem, but you, whatever you say, you better be able to answer or explain, I should say. From that day, um, we, he started picking on me. Every time he presents, he, uh, his finger come to me because nobody was to talk. He was very intimidated. With time, I realized he never cared whether I was right or wrong. That's not his point. All he wants to do is just fix my understanding of electrophysiology. So I, he would, I would answer. I said, okay, why did you say that? And then sometimes, okay, go up and draw it for me. And then obviously many times you guys like, you know, nothing but sit back sit, and sit down and it's like, okay, in 1971, we did this study and, um, and this is how we found. So slowly, I didn't realize then, but after two, three, four, five months, I realized that he's really, really built the, uh, the building blocks of electrophysiology slowly understanding with rhythm. So I will uh, invite you to say the same thing. You know, if if something does not listen, if something needs to be more clarification, don't let this opportunity. I'm not here to just blurt and think and, and then just talk. I'm just here to just to build. Enough of that. So uh, please, you know, like, like if you need to stop me, stop me. Now, why electrophysiology? Why do you like the electrophysiology? Electrophysiology is really a, a, a deep traditional specialty. A, electrophysiology is not put in pacemakers. You're not a you're not a you know, electrophysiologist, if all you do is put a pacemaker, although it's an important part of it, um, or even do an ablation, uh, that's just a, just a treatment. But the core of really electrophysiology is understanding the mechanisms of arrhythmias, understanding what's normal, what's not normal, and how does the heart respond, and how do you really sit down and just, you know, be mesmerized, be impressed by how uh, uh, subhanAllah, this thing has created and be able to explain every single beat. I could do now one ECG, we spend, we do one to two um, hours. Sometimes we do five, six session in one ECG because we go on deep at the cellular level, at the mechanistic level, try to understand it. So this is this is my part. The many presentation that I give, we'll talk about atrial fibrillation and we go boom, 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 boom. This is, this is all how you ablate. This is how you treat. This is how you put a watchman and, you know, block the, um, uh, the, uh, the left atrial appendage for uh, clot prevention, what have you. But this is not my goal here. Um, uh, so again, coming back to the, to the building block of um, electrophysiology. Okay. Um, I think enough, uh, enough said, but I really would like sometimes, you know, get to, uh, you know, to meet each one of you, I get to know because I don't know who's my audience. That makes it a little bit challenging. Um, so I definitely will tell you this might go um, too simple for some of you and hopefully will benefit the majority and let's just start. Okay. So again, the objective of today um, is just really build it um, slowly. Um, if you if you see it and then you try to memorize it, don't ever ever ever. Um, I'm talking to mashallah all grown up and cardiologists and you know electrophysiologists and what have you. You've learned this. Don't ever try to memorize. This is my always uh, start to all the uh, my lectures to the, to the my students is don't try to memorize because your memory will always um, fool you. Will always fail you. Uh, try to understand as much as you can. Even a simple EKG, you have to understand what's happening instead of memorizing what goes up, what goes down, and you call it, uh, you know, an access deviation or bundle of fascicular, what have you. I want you to be able to explain it. That's what an electrophysiologist uh, is. So I chose the SVT as an introduction. If I, if you go back, you know, it's just almost like a, this is an introduction to, um, uh, to what I hope will be, inshallah, a series and then uh, to, to describe the different mechanism. But I thought, okay, SVT, and then you see in the beginning, I called it part one, um, uh, is uh, this what I um, intended. So this is when it becomes really interaction. I got really bored presenting uh, this, uh, this way, um, unless we have an interaction. So this is when we just really make an interaction and I'd ask you what all sort of in, uh, of um, SVT that you, you, you would know. Um, uh, and um, guess, I guess I'm just gonna be talking to myself today, that's okay. Um, 
but I want you to do if you don't want to, you know, jump in and turn on your mic and say something or um, if you don't want to do that, that's fine. But if you have, if you need to or if you want to, uh, it's encouraged. Um, the 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 SVT classifies a, you know the, all the different rhythms that use the atrium or originates from the atrium. Uh, probably, and most of the people um, when they talk about SVT, they really mean AV and re entry. At least in, in what I found out in emergency rooms, most people that's what they call. It. But electrophysiology, we go deeper. So um, atrial AV node reentry uh, by itself with all different types. This is so. Let me just step back. If we talk about AV and RT, I mean, it's incredible. We can spend easily, uh, you know, six hours just talking about AV node reentry, just from the mechanisms on the different uh, anatomy, what uses, what have you. So this is much deeper than what we can cover uh, in today. So I, uh, I'm considering today as an introduction. So atrial flutters um, from typical to a typical scar-related, you know, post-surgical, uh, you know, transplant patient, all these patients that come with atrial flutter, all different to flutters. Um, atrial fibrillation, obviously, is another type. Um, atrial ventricular reentrant tachycardia, this is obviously, uh, um, is uh, related to the accessory pathways, whether a manifest WPW or concealed accessory pathway, um, that's what you know causes AV node re uh, atrial ventricular uh, tachycardia. Um, atrial tachycardia obviously is, uh, is another one, and sinus tach, uh, yes, it's an SVT. Although we, you know, we, we might not treat it, what have you, is reaction, but it's uh, as long as this tachycardia originates in the atrium. It's an SVT. Okay. Um, the last one is kind of zebra. Um, it's uh, uh, what we call a PJRT, persistent junctional reciprocator in tachycardia. It's technically part of the um, AVRT. It involves a, a uh, uh, what do you call it, um, credential in uh, retro, uh, uh, retrograde um, uh, accessory uh, pathway, but that's, uh, it's, it has its own, uh, it's on almost a reverse Maheim. Uh, tachycardia. So when we talk about any one of these, um, it's really important to just, uh, you know, dive into uh, the mechanisms uh, from like the macro, how does this rhythm propagate? Uh, it's important to get into the cellular mechanisms. And that alone is just another, uh, another um, a beast on its own, uh, which is from all the different channelopathies, not, not necessarily channelopathy, but what's going on at the cellular base, um, uh, which mostly just you want, we can do it once and you, we can have a little bit of a high big, unless we're talking specifically about the channelopathies, um, then it, it, will be, uh, it will be a different talk. But nonetheless, micellar mechanism is important. Anatomy for EP is just totally different than uh, we'll, Typically, a typical intervention cardiologist would want to know. So there's some specific important information to know uh, and I understand in the, in electrophysiology. Um, ECG, obviously, um, the cornerstone of all, all that, sorry. And um, intracardiac, we will not get to this at all today. We're not going to talk about the intracardiac. That's not my goal. But it will we'll get to that. It just once we build the, the cornerstone, we get to do different rhythms specifically. And what are the type of recording, how to intervention, what are the typical different maneuvers to use in the EP lab? What does it mean when we record? Um, and uh, how do you differentiate between different, you know, tachycardias when the patient presents and it's not clear from the ECG or you induce something? You have dual tachycardias. The patient comes and he has a V-node reentry also has a concealed, uh, a bystander accessory pathway, you know, how kind of different maneuvers that uh, you can use uh, to differentiate uh, the tachycardias, for example. Again, so that's, uh, will come later. A medical uh, management, that's a, another very, very important part um, uh, of uh, the treatment and uh, taking care of patients. Uh, what are all the different uh, uh, interrhythmics, which one to choose, uh, whether by guidelines, what the guidelines, why did the guidelines choose that, and, um, you know, some uh, specific patient considerations as well. And obviously, what I call interventional EP, once you build this, you see that last part, 
this is the ablation, this is the intervention. That's where we end up doing day to day, but I refused uh, to let my uh, fellows just do that because that's the fun part, believe me, I know that. When you have a patient who has been suffering for a tachycardia, you induce it and then you terminate it. It looks beautiful. The patient feels great. That's the end point. But it, it, it makes no sense uh, to jump to that and not having all the building blocks and being a true, complete electrophysiologist. Because if you don't understand that, believe me, we get fooled. If people who do not understand, you'll get, you'll, you'll get fooled um, many times. That's not fun. Okay. Enough to that. Any... Any questions so far? I guess. Guess not. Okay. So, the simple thing that I thought of is just starting with is we we can talk about different um, uh, you know tachycardia mechanisms. Um, can can somebody? Oh, please, I mean, uh, remember I told you I, when I was talking to my teacher a uh, long time ago, he never cared what was right or wrong. This is not being right or wrong here. It's just more making it interactive and you build. You will learn from our mistakes more than we learn from our successes. So I would invite someone here uh, to just, uh, I prefer to be a resident and I, I apologize. I don't know who is all in the, on the call. So this, you might feel this is uh, too basic, bear with me. Um, it was a time that we all did not know this. So can somebody jump in, maybe um, just tell me the, the mechanisms of tachycardias? If you don't know, that's fine, say I don't know. No? Okay. Majority. Uh, hello, um, Dr. Uh, Jamani. Uh, Hi. Hi. I don't Hi, know if, if, uh, if you remember me. I, uh, I saw you um, at, uh, in Boston with uh, Isrik. I don't know if uh, you remember. I think, yes, yes, I uh, think I remember that, yes. Yeah. How are you? I think uh, the, the, the first, the uh, fine thanks. And you? I'm, well, I'm doing well, thank you. Thank you very much. The, uh, the first mechanism of, uh, with the SVT are uh, macro variants. Uh, very so good, if, I agree. If you... Yes, 100% agree. Because my uh, connection is not uh, very good. No, I, I no no. You're doing you're doing great. Thank you for jumping in. But you, I agree. So you did mention that uh, the 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 macro reentry. So uh, you you're absolutely right. Uh, okay, you can uh, you can. Uh, okay. You can go on. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for jumping in, Namia. Yeah, this is a, this is great. Um, it, so you, you're right. So there's a reentry uh, in general, and then you mentioned the macro reentry or micro reentry. Um, you can uh, uh, it's just a little, little bit of snow in there, but reentry is a very important mechanism. The other one is a trigger and focal tachycardia. So this is very important. So we have either focal uh, tachycardia or reentry. Um, so the the like to spend a little bit of a mechanism uh, each one of them. So we, if we, if you all remember uh, the uh, action potential, you know what? Uh, one thing I do a lot is I draw. So I'm gonna try something, see if I can. Uh, okay, can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay. Okay, so when you see the action uh, action uh, potential, um, you when you you will always see the you know for the uh, this is now we're diving at the cellular level. I try not to make it boring, but it's really really important to just understand for the for the fun of understanding. Um, so there is the the here it will be the microvolt. It is the uh, the uh, the differential. Um, uh, 
on the cellular level, the depolarization level, the, the voltage, I should say. So the way it starts, as you all probably as you all know, is you have a baseline uh, of the action uh, potential between the between the extracellular and intracellular, and then you have you saw this probably uh, okay, and then you will see this right. You've probably all seen this. Um, this uh, action potential is the way the the way the cell gets depolarized. This is the you know the the cell uh, will be at a um, at the baseline uh, at the baseline level, and then something will trigger uh, right here. It trigger the the uh, opening of the, right here is the sodium channels. When this happens, you have a severe influx, and will create that wave that propagates uh, from cell to cell. Uh, this is this is what you know called the the obviously the myocardial uh, 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 cell uh, transmission from uh, the junction uh, the gap junction and transfer from one cell to the other and continues. So the key here is really that we um, we have something that you know triggers. This one will not start until something triggers here. So either a pacemaker or some cell. So if you look at the cells, you can look at the heart. What actually started in this? What starts? You know, obviously you all you know you all know. Um, maybe we can do a little bit, a couple review basic things. But the sinus node is you you know it's the the pacemaker of the heart. So how come how come it decides all the cells? None of them is generating. Any um, uh, any uh, what do you call that um, action potential? There's no action, no triggers. Just the sinus node has the ability to do that, and then that's where you start wondering why. Why is that? Um, because remember, I just showed you this. This is you know this is different. This requires a trigger. This requires a trigger, but the action potential in the uh, um, uh, uh, for the AV for the sinus node a little bit AV node too. So if I draw it again, uh, so this this the same thing, but the way the action uh, potential on on the um, uh, cell on the uh, sinus cell is actually slowly gets it does not require trigger the action because you know the slowly the depolarization starts and then when it reaches what we call a threshold I mentioned to. Uh, to, to you know, I forgot to mention this in the previous one, but I can go back to it. There is the threshold when you start depolarization. When you reach that threshold, that's when you have no control. They the the patient starts and they open in the gates and the conduction. Now the cell is depolarized, but you have to reach that threshold. The same thing here. The cell will not trigger anything until it reaches this threshold here. Let's say minus forty. Okay, let's say nice minus forty. Well, it starts going up slowly. This is the difference. Remember, we, we saw this one, how it goes, you know, suddenly jumps. Maybe I can draw it just next to it. The other one goes and nothing happening. And then suddenly, suddenly it jumps and it goes like this. Um, but the, oh, this one here, it just slowly starts opening, leaking until it's by itself with no intervention, nothing needs to happen here. You need something to start it. Here, nothing needs to start it. By itself, they start depolarizing, depolarizing slowly until it reaches this threshold. When it reaches this threshold, that's when it jumps and it and then comes down later. So it looks different. You see that, you know, it looks different than this one. But the key, the key of all this is really what's happening right here. This here, this is what the sinus node does, slowly, slowly, slowly. And this is, you know, one day we'll review this in details. I'm not trying to uh, throw this all at you at once. Inshallah, we will review this so we, it makes perfect sense. But you have what we call, you know, the funny uh, uh, potassium channel. Uh, that, believe it or not, they're called funny, um, they, you know, they, for the reason, I guess. They are slowly, slowly start leaking, 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 and start raising, raising slowly, raising the um, uh, the the, uh, the 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 voltage in the cell. The depolarization starts happening, 
And then when it reaches this threshold, that's when the bullet is out. Okay, here it's just almost a compressed in string. This is when the door opens and that's where you start the action potential. So this here is the property of the sinus node, the little bit of the AV node as well, but this is no other cells should do this. But other cells based on electrolyte problems or otherwise they can have this, uh, you know, this property. And by the way, uh, when you give the patient, the patient, you know, um, you know, the let's say, you know, the medication and terrorhythmics, uh, that what he's trying to do is bring this, the start, bring it down here. So I'm just going to draw it again. We just said, it's, you know, that the threshold is here. The action potential will not start until it reaches this one. Okay. So when it starts slowly uh, coming down, it open, 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 and it waiting to reach this line. The minute it reaches this line, it shoots up and then it comes down. Okay. So here where it starts. But sometimes when you use medication, really all you're doing, let's say to slow down the sinus node. So how are you slowing down the sinus node? What are you doing? Different mechanism. Some of them are sympathetic uh, uh, and otherwise, but many, they are actually lower the, 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 uh, the, the um, action, uh, not action, but the voltage on the cell. Instead of being minus 60, you take it down to a minus 90. So for this, if it starts here, it takes it longer. It takes it longer to reach the threshold. And then that's when it fires. And then it goes back down to the low. So there is, instead of having, uh, you know, the, uh, another one, another one that goes up here, you, you will have, you will have a space in between the, between the peaks here. And then the other one, the other, the other one will go slower it goes from the peak here to the next one. So that's how you slow it down. You pretty much dip and dig in deep the the act, the, uh, the the voltage, the transmembranous voltage. You get it down, say so it takes it longer to the cell to reach the trigger. The only reason I mentioned this is so we can um, talk about the uh, uh, the triggered mechanism of a of arrhythmias. So this is what I was trying to draw. Obviously, this is much better drawing. I don't make fun of my drawing. You can, but that's all right. Um, but you know, the, this one you could see initially that um, that pacemaker action potential here coming up, and that's when it's just slowly, slowly uh, start leaking. This is only for the sinus node. I showed you how the other one. It starts leaking, leaking, leaking until it gets here. When it reaches here, then it's out of control. This is one the the cell get depolarized and the action potential starts. When this action potential starts, it moves outside and it goes to the next one and it triggers the transmission, other, um, the other uh, action potential. I just want this to be an introduction to tell you how does the trigger mechanism, how does an atrial tachycardia start? Why does it start? What is the mechanism? You know, you see a cell sitting there and suddenly it says to fire. And how does the sinus node, you know, fires? The rest of the heart is just transmit, as you know, whether the his bundle or, or even the AV node that, or the myocardium, atrial, ventricular, it just transmit. But what actually starts? And this is very important to understand. Now, the next time we have somebody with VT or AF or atrial tachycardia, you start building on this. I said, this is a trigger mechanism. This medication will not work, but well, this will work better. And you know what you're doing. Um, before you when you take the patient to the lab and start doing mapping and evolutions. Okay. Uh, and if this gets a little mixed up, don't worry. Inshallah, we we'll come back to this and spend just specific time uh, for this, uh, a, for the action potential. Believe me, you will help you a lot. You will help you tremendously. Um, so this is just showing you what are, what's really happening in the sodium influx uh, and then the calcium, how to, you know, what's going on that uh, starts this. Now, for the, I, was, I showed you the other action potential. Now, this cell does not generate, does not start, does not give orders. It just transmits. So it needs something. If you are just transmitting, you have to transmit something. Transmit what? You transmit this. So you have uh, a, something that already started, a wave that started, and all you do is transmit it. 
uh, they, because they don't have the, specific, the particular um, uh, funny channel, uh, it's, again, it's called funny, um, this one relies on the trigger. When it triggers, that's when it starts the action potential and moves on. And when you start treating patients and you're giving them this medication or they are, patient comes to you and they are taking all the antifungal and they have in syncope and you look at the EKG, you look at this like, oh my goodness, these people have, for example, they develop a long QT. Why do they have long QT? What's happening? Well, how come the sodium or low potassium or you know, the uh, electrolytes disturb this one? And this, some of this, when you put them together, give you the EKG. So this is the gesture transmitted. So we, again, we build in the trigger and the reentry. So um, this is a different um, ion channels in, involved uh, in it. Again, we will uh, set a time specific for uh, to review this in the future. Um, and this is, uh, this is just telling you um, how, like I said, the sinus nodes start firing and then the transmission is different. So this is our side by side how the transmission uh, goes on. So most of the trigger tachycardia have the same, uh, same mechanism or this one disturbed, disturbed by electrolytes that becomes looking just like this. And that's how you have, end up having atrial tachycardia. Now, um, our friend Lemia rightfully so discovered the, um, uh, the re-entry uh, mechanism. I'm not a, a fan of putting slides for the entry mechanism because it has a story. Believe me, I, when I sit down with my patient, even a year old, I can explain to her, I usually have stories and who's the bad guy, who's trying to catch what. Nonetheless, the re-entry mechanism is the majority, the majority of rhythms you're dealing with the re-entry mechanism, period. Um, then we'll talk about, you know, um, uh, the different ones and we, uh, we'll talk which one are re-entry, which one are triggers. But what is re-entry mechanism? It's such an important thing that we understand this. Um, so let's say what you have first, uh, you have two different uh, uh, pathways. So when the uh, uh, impulse comes, in the, it goes on both pathways, okay? So it goes on this side faster than this side. This is one of, one of the, uh, 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 what do you call this? The prerequisite of having uh, the reentry mechanism is you have to have a fast and a slow conducting or, um, you know, channels. This, you, I will not specify, you can think about this, for example, if you know reentry, that's fine. This is what, you know, the, the, the poster child of uh, reentry mechanism. You really, you, we, can, we can pretend this is the AV node. This is the fast pathway in the AV node. This is the slow pathway in the AV node. Later, you understand why the patient come with SVT. You ask them to do a vagal maneuver or Valsalva maneuvers. You are able to terminate. We, when we get to this particular particular arrhythmia, as we go deep, this is you know just be just before even we get to the P study and ablation, the what typical atypical slow 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 fast fast slow and um, multiple arms, uh, left uh, left word X word. But let's just stay on the mechanism. That's why really my goal is if we go through this journey, just slowly build it. When you get to advanced level, this will become just like a second nature to you. Nonetheless, to have reentry. Anywhere, let's just pretend this is the AV node. The impulse comes from a top. Normally, it goes down in the fast. Obviously, it goes faster. And then the slow pathway goes slower, and it catches. It's a little misrepresentation here. I don't want to make it too complex, but this is, let's just understand this way. So what happened is, you know, you have the uh, something there's something called um, uh, refractory period. Refractory period is how long does it take um, uh, for any arm, for any conduction system, how long does it take it to, uh, uh, to recover after it, it conducts an impulse? So either, you know, they, once the impulse goes through it, it takes it time to de repolarize and be ready again. That's called refractory period. Okay, so there are different ones. So typically, the fast one, the fast pathways, it takes some longer to recover. The slow pathway, 
let's say this is the, you know this let's say this is the slow this is the fast this you know the the um let me go back to the so the fast pathway once you have the impulse going through let's say this one you know takes it you know 20 milliseconds to recover uh or let's say this one 20, 20 millisecond the fast is always takes it longer the analogy i give you if i you know if i let's say go somebody does laps around a stadium or go upstairs you know eight to ten uh, you know let's say five floors of stairs and if you go super fast right if you go super fast and your friend goes you know it takes its time when you run upstairs when you reach the the fifth floor uh and then i tell you okay well uh or go again go on other five floors you're like hold on I'm really out of breath. Give me some time. I need to recover from this. It will take you some time before you say, okay, I'm ready. Or if you're going around the laps around the stadium, for example, you do very fast around, around the stadium. You come back, it's like, well, again, it's like, oh, give me that. I'm dying now. He's just let me recover. But somebody just kind of takes its time and just jogs around that comes slowly and not slow, but you know, it's just not really killing something, not sprinting. It will, it will be tired at the end. You will need time to recover, but it won't take much. It will just take a look, okay, okay. Uh, I think I can do it again. Let's go again. So you will be able to go again. So this is the analogy I would give you. The fast always takes it longer. It needs more time to recover because it went too fast maybe, okay? Uh, but the slow takes, takes its time to, um, uh, to go and it's able to take it again. Now, here what happened, typically you have, an extra beat comes from somewhere. An early beat, my goodness, it is just here. If I spend an hour here and I explain to you what is, what is how, how do you explain the, 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 the different entrainment or in training of the, for example, the AV node, it's all based on the previous cycle, how much you pass. But let's not make it complicated, okay? Just very simple. Uh, let's say the patient was, um, was having a uh, a rhythm at let's say at um, a thousand milliseconds okay a thousand millisecond well that's how we in the ep we're talking millisecond but let's just work in 60 beats per minute 60 beats per minute that means every second you get a beat every second every beat these pathways are trained they're looking for every second they take a beat that's how they get stable okay now suddenly you have a sudden acceleration somebody and every second this pathway is expecting a beat, but suddenly something early comes. Let's say it's a PAC or PVC, doesn't matter. That things come early. If it comes really early, it surprises the pathway. It's like, whoa, whoa, you're too early. You're supposed to be, you know, come back. You know, you're supposed to take a second to come, but this one comes, let's say, in a half a second. When that happens, that's one of the criteria. Remember, I told you you have to have a fast, you have to have slow, you have to have a trigger. So the PAC, that's why, for example, SVTs, uh, especially the reentry, there are always some triggers there, always. And then we'll talk about the implication later, clinically, what does it mean? So you have that PAC that comes early. Because it came early, it surprised these pathways. It's like, you are way early. Remember I told you the fast? Remember I told you the fast needs longer time to recover? Remember? Because you went really fast around the stadium. It needs a longer time because you're just literally huffing and puffing. That one will say, no, I can't. I really can't go again. I need my rest. But this guy is just a slow guy. He's a chiller. He's like, well, yeah, no problem. I can, I can do this. So the impulse ended up going only this one through the slow pathway. And it continues down. But now, once by the time it reaches here, this pathway... This first one, now it's just like, okay, now I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. But the, obviously this, this uh, impulse is gone, but the electrical signal when it gets here, it sees that this one is empty and now ready. Maybe it was not ready before when this came. But by the time this took its time come here, now this is ready. That's why it, it, this one now is ready, it recovered. And then that's why the... Uh, the signal will re-enter through this. By the time it gets here, it re-enters again. Now you have what we call re-entry mechanism.
I am willing to repeat this, um, you know, if it, if it makes sense or does not make sense to have any question, because this is the fundamental of many arrhythmias you're going to treat in your life, many arrhythmias, and you will understand the why I talked about the action potential, because this also little tiny action potential are happening here transmitted. How do you play with those to slow this one down? So you treat the patient, when you treat the patient with SVT, you treat them with medication, you combine in medication, what are you trying to do? Uh, including the sympathetic or parasympathetic intervention, for example, with people solve the maneuvers or the ablation. The ablation is the easiest part, believe me. Yes, it takes skills, it takes understanding, but I'm, I'm more impressed with somebody who understand electrophysiology. That's what the word, the word physiology is there. Nonetheless, this is really, really, really important part of understanding how, uh, uh, you know, how this um, uh, happened. I'm just gonna, let me just see if you can, I switch to my drawing board. Okay. Um, so, Let's say this is that, you know, the slow, I'm just picking randomly, uh, and then this is the fast. Um, so we did say that the impulse comes because it comes early. When it reaches here, this one here, it will not be able to enter. It will not be enter this, but it will be able to kind of meander and slowly come down the, the slow pathway and then continue down. And at the same time, this now has recovered. So this same impulse goes back up here. By the, by the time it reaches here, this one, remember it covers quicker, it re-enters this way. But the, you know, there are many different ways you can stop this rhythm. Again, it's not uh, our uh, purpose today, but let me just go back and see uh, if I, oh, sorry. So normally when you have the impulse, just normal, this is not a PAC, okay? Uh, with just the normal conduction, when it comes down, okay? It kind of goes on both ways, right? I told you it goes both ways. This one, this is normal conduction, it conducts both, both ways. It, it kind of goes down the fast and it continues down. Remember I told you it goes down here and it continues down, technically it does not do that. This one beats it here, and as it comes up and they collide here. This is a minor details, uh, detail, but we'll, we'll skip it for the sake of the complexity. Again, we can spend days on uh, slowly, but uh, uh, on this mechanism. Great. Now we know the mechanisms. How do we apply? So this is the list that we just talked about in the, in the subhanAllah, the time flew. It's uh, okay. I'll try to wrap, but I have so much to talk about. But I will just def, declassify these on the mechanisms. Which one are the, the triggers? I gave you the first one, atrial fibrillation. If you don't want to say, just say it in your head. Which one are the triggers? Which one are, do not, are not re-entry? They are not re-entry mechanism. They have a trigger mechanism. Something decided to fire. Um, and then... Um, causing this. So atrial fibrillation is, uh, is one of them, obviously. The other one is, you guessed it right. You're absolutely right, atrial tachycardia. I could hear you. Man, I can imagine if our national team lost. We won, you got the copy, it was amazing games, and we, we still have a, I guess I got you tired at the end of the day. I'm still in the middle of the day, so that's not fair. Um, anyway, so this is atrial tachycardia is a focal. Um, trigger as a focal trigger. Remember, we said two mechanism. We talked about the focal triggers, and then how, uh, for example, the sinus node, you know, triggers, and then we just talk about the reentry. We'll revisit them in the future with specific SVTs. Um, the other one, a lot of people forget, it is actually classified as an SVT, the sinus tachycardia, regardless of what the cause, whether inappropriate sinus tachycardia or a dysautonomia or it just uh, the reflux. Uh, tachycardia, uh, sinus tachycardia. It's actually classified as sinus tachycardia, but you know it's a nice guy, so I gave him a green uh, color. 
the rest, very simple. They're all reentry mechanisms. They all have reentry mechanism. Um, even VT, majority of VTs, and then we, we we'll talk one day when we get to that level. Um, you will see how beautiful when you start understanding how the, these mechanisms are uh, are VT. So anywhere you go, reentry is your your best deal. <clears throat> so maybe this is repetitive. But this is how you know the from the pacemaker cell it transmit it goes to the conduction cell and then from one to one and this is how the the cell the the polarized initially and then the, the, that once the trigger comes reaches the cell and then of all sorts we're gonna spend a lot of time inshallah talking about this and then slowly it, it goes from here from minus sixty when you have the depolarization happens it would slowly raise it until it reaches the, the trigger threshold, they got depolarization and they got the repolarization. So I guess I sometimes like to repeat it in a different way, different format. So can I make it, um, um, can I explain it? Um, this is really the, the basic probably things that or the majority of the guy wanted to, to cover. I do not want to hold you longer, but you just brief, things about the, um, the conduction. Uh, uh, I, I see the heart different than uh, one I see him as a general cardiologist or intervention cardiologist, or what we call here plumbers. We, they call us electrician, we call us plumbers as you probably do the same. Um, I see the heart in a different ways, but not, it's it, just my um, teacher used to say, the heart is all electrical with some muscle in it um because and then the the intervention say the opposite there's always this fun uh, tug war going by in between us so this is you know this uh sunna allah this is your this is what it's the amazing that's keeping the heart going you're all familiar with this you have the sinus node here sitting up here and it, it conducts down to the av node and then the his bundle it goes to the uh, right bundle and the anterior and posterior. And believe me, there is a subtle branch in the left bundle that most people uh, miss. And then it has some in implication on EKG and, and MI and what have you. And the right bundle is very easy. So if you put them next to each other, this is, this is you know, the um, uh, very, you know, basic, but that's the important thing is probably you need to know. But the uh, conduction system, and I warned you initially that this could be too basic. Um, I hope I didn't go too basic, but we can take it as, as deep as you want. An important structure that I like to make sure they point out for the you know for uh, everyone that this is going from the left, sorry, from the right atrium to the left atrium. The conduction to the left atrium is through the Buckman bundle. And this is a super highway. These are all super highway. These have the ability to conduct super, super fast. And when we get, if you want, I don't know if you, something you want to do is the, the EKG series. And I really do not want you to think or try to memorize what's a left interior piscular block or left interior, because the minute you try to memorize anything, the many things changes for you will be lost. Because, um, you know, if you, if you try to go from one area of, of I know even in Algiers, if you, if you go from, you know, Husindain to Quba or whatever, any direction to Hedra, if you only memorized one way or two ways, if there is construction, it's a block, if it's traffic, if anything, you will be lost. So never try to memorize. It's okay to get pattern recognition and this we do a lot in electrophysiology, span recognition, but you should be able to understand because now suddenly the patient comes with a PAT, with a PVT, with a different rhythm, or his pace, something is changing, going to throw you off. Um, my, okay, so uh, the, this is the, the Buckman bundle. Even when we record on an, in AP, you will see how this kind of, you know, some flutters when we get to the typical flutters and the epicardial um, uh, conduction. Uh, layers that go sometimes in in this, you would see nothing coming here, and then hello.
Okay. Right. You, you were, sorry, somebody tried something? Okay. Um, so the, this this is one of the conduction uh, system in the atrium. I don't want you to forget it. Um, you know, this is the Buckman bundle. We have a nice slide, so you can. It's actually very thick. When I was doing an animal research study, we trying to one of the way we're looking at the conduction. It's very hard to break this. I have the heart in my hand of the animal. You know, obviously the animal is alive. He's beating, and it's trying to cauterize and trying to destroy the Buckman bundle. Good luck. Good luck. Um, I do have patients, you know, after aggressive ablation done somewhere, they come and the atrium, the right atrium is in sinus, the left atrium is in flutter. Uh, you can have that. But usually there's other infiltrative disease mechanism involved uh, in this. But I just want to point out the uh, this mechanism and we maybe next time we talk about uh, another one. I was picked up to talk about, you know, as an example, start with the flutter, but we just scratching the surface here um listen um it's um it's that time again it's almost uh, an hour since we started we can go on i prefer to stop here um like i mentioned before there's so many layers we go on in within the same uh you know the disease same arrhythmia but um please you know if you have interest this is not for uh, for everyone. We can do it. This is why my fault. I didn't ask who's the who's the audience. I just assumed um, residents, uh, people who are interested in 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 uh, arrhythmias. We can we can go deeper. And I think you would not know if you're interested or not. Just like me, I literally I was very happy in the cath lab. I just did every um, every study, every intervention you could you could imagine at that time. But really, the understanding once that my the teacher slowly that you know that slowly started getting me introduced to the deep understanding of electrophysiology. Again, electrophysiology is not putting a pacemaker device or even not even doing an ablation. It's being able to understand deeply because that's that's what uh, otherwise you know anybody can do it. Um, I think I'll stop here and then. Um, entertain any maybe questions I, I thank you uh Mohammed thank you for this uh interesting conference uh, by, by in basic in fundamental so uh, if uh, there is any question of the audience uh, inshallah it will be uh, uh, several conferences That would, that, would, that would be great. So if, if you have anybody has any questions, please jump in. Uh, like I said, I, I could very easy skim and I put you know you know 50 slides or different SVTs and talk about them and how you how you treat them. That's not my purpose and I'm not interested in doing that. You can get it, you can hear it from uh, everywhere. Does his bond and form a team that slowly we build this, inshallah with time, I inshallah will guarantee that you will get to a level where you will be able to just uh, master this uh, somebody yeah somebody dahiman you have you the question dahiman vazi dahiman uh, well, hello everybody i'm dr dahiman i'm a, a resident in uh, cardiology uh, I a two department. So I have uh, a question not about the this basics, but uh, uh, about uh, the jump in uh, the nodal uh, conjunction. So yes. um, I didn't find the the, the explanation um, by searching in different books. So uh, why the limit of uh, fifty uh, milliseconds of rise of AH horizon between two atrial stimulation? in uh, order to define a jump in uh, nodal conjunction. So what is the electrophysiologic logic uh, behind this uh, interval? Thank you. But, and thank you for the no. presentation. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you know, um, this, is, this is a good question. Let me just go to my, uh, the other, my drawing board. Uh, so they, many times you, there's, trying to switch. So 
the, the one of the main reasons there is something called decremental conduction. So when you have, you know, I was explaining to you, for, for example, and it's not good color, let me just uh, do this. Okay. So if you, if you have a, a, con a conducting system, uh, I think for the sake of discussion, let's just keep it the same. Okay. Just so we can, uh, we can be oriented the same. So what Dr. Dahman is uh, the beautifully describing is what we call the jump. Um, you take a little bit nudge. So it, I don't know if anybody or everybody has the intracardiac experience, whether the jump means uh, in very simple terms is when we uh, stimulate the atrium, we see how long does it for that stimulus to, for example, pass through the HES. So for the sake of discussion here today, the, you know, the, the, the HES, okay, got to run out of colors here. So the his continues this way, okay? So the conduction comes from, from the top. And then, as I told you, it goes on, on both uh, pathways, right? And it, it continues, that's what it entered the his. And then here, the same conduction, whatever I told you, whether it slides or it just makes it, it doesn't matter. So these two conductions go. So when you go through the fast, when you go through the fast pathway, so the... The, 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 we, we, we measure you know, the, the time that starts from here until we see the, the signal you know, reaches this one here. So from the time it comes here to the time it comes here, a little higher, not, not really at the his, uh, not this area from the AV node. Not, nonetheless, so you measure it from the, the his catheter. So you, you have this going, going the, the same from the fast pathway coming up. One thing you need to know that there is something called decremental conduction, meaning the AH in this case, or you know, the, it, 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 it slows down. Maybe another, it's warranted another. Okay. So let's say this is, um, this is a conduction system. The faster, Every time you, you, you go, it has a speed. If you double or you go up in the speed, it kind of starts a little slowly a little bit and then slowing a little more and slowing more, more, more until it just dies out, okay? This is decremental. So you see slow, slow, slow progression of the uh, of AH interval, meaning from the time it starts from, from here to the time, uh, from, from here to the time it reaches here. But what happened is this one stops. Then suddenly we have a backup, right? We have the, the backup. Let me just, for the sake of today, just now all the conduction just go through here. This one is completely blocked. No, because nothing comes down here. Then all the conduction comes come from here. Okay. So that switch, switch from this conduction to this conduction. This one has, you know, an, an X speed. This one has, you know, an X plus Y speed for this one. So it's definitely Y positive. So um, it, it, that's why you have that, that jump. And that's what we call the jump in, in 50 millisecond by decrease. And it has a very specific, uh, uh, As we jump, but the jump, it has a very specific definition. Um, but in general, when you do decremental, you pace in the atrium faster and faster and faster, and you watch in, and suddenly you send in, you know, this the the rhythm faster and faster and faster and faster. It comes a time when this one stops, and only the conduction. But this slide here is slower than this side, so this you could easily see if this is, let's say, in this one. Uh, is a hundred millisecond. You see, when it goes through this, you know, through the slow, it's actually, let's say, uh, for example, 170 millisecond. Okay, so this is this is why you have to wait for that significant jump because if you just increase it just a little bit, 
how do you know if it's what I call the, is just the decremental conduction um, uh, of this pathway? So it's kind of almost normal physio physiology. And sometimes you have a little slowing within the atrial conduction system as well. I mean, the atrial muscle as well. Um, so that's why you have to have a significant, something that really jump. And then when this, when did the study show they really, you know, that significant jump is, you know, that come, you know, they, uh, the 50 millisecond come up as a, as an, as a number, um, so the, the differentiate between decremental conduction and a jump from one pathway to the other. Okay, so that's this the that's a general um, explanation. Although this is just we'll we we'll dive in a little bit deeper uh, into the uh, into the intracardiac treatment, but it's an excellent question, and it goes exactly what the reactor you mentioned. Thank you for uh, uh, have you another question? Take the opportunity to ask a question to our experts and to be interactive. Yes, Is I there, have a question, please. Oh, go, go on, Bounty. So uh, thank you very much for your masterpiece presentation about basics in EP. So my question is about uh, in, um, inappropriate sinus tachycardia. Uh, at what point can we incriminate the micro reentrant mechanism in its settings? As we know that, that it's uh, principally uh, due to uh, triggers. Yeah, so, you know, it, like you said, you're, you're to the, the uh, inappropriate sinus tach. Uh, I can treat any FIB or VTI. I just don't like inappropriate sinus stack. It's just that this patient that don't feel well, don't well. Uh, and then we used to go and destroy the uh, sinus node in the past, but good luck. I mean, you really, the, sin the sinus node is a very large and uh, almost epicardial. You have to crush the whole thing. It's just, it's not a fun thing to treat. So, but now we have with the Cortlinor, or the, you know, Evrobidine treatment as a medication. Uh, but use this as a, so the the sinus the sinus inappropriate sinus tachycardia is a is a, a purely uh, a triggered mechanism. Although there is a reentry uh, sinus reentry, and I think that's your question, which is a very brilliant question because you're right. You know, it could be thing coming from the sinus node when it's actually a reentry, and the it's almost impossible to tell from the EKG. Or just you know the, the just sort of clinically, but only when you are there and you do you know you introduce you know um, uh, doubles you know do a program stimulation when you just uh, find out. Uh, but so since we're talking about this, um, to all my friends who do already uh, EP studies and all that, that's when you introduce S1 or JNAS2, you know second stimulant you know the the early systole, early system, uh, um, stems. That's what you trying. We you're trying to do. I thought I was in the other. I was drawing for myself. Okay. Um, so th this is uh, this is what you're really trying to do. You're trying to, in to induce uh, and block on this on one side or re-enter on the other side and create. That's why you have to have a fast. You have to have a slow, and you have to have a block, and then. Always, always, for example, AV node reentry. We're all born, the majority of people have what we call dual uh, physiology. Every time uh, we do an EP study, which in general, even if patient comes for AFib ablation, you do an EP study, um, you will, you know, you will notice the, um, the, the dual physiology. And it, uh, Dr. Dahman mentioned you like you jump from one, from the fast to the slow. You know, if the patient is not having AV node reentry, so you're not going to go and do an ablation. My point is, we were born with it. So why does it doesn't happen when we're one week old or five years old? Why does it happen when you're, I don't know, 42 or 45 or what have you? So you always need that trigger. You always need that trigger, okay? You, you need that trigger. So something that triggers the circuit. And when you go and you do any piece study, you're actually triggering that circuit. So when you do that study, and you induce an, an arrhythmia, a tachycardia, with a second introducing an extra systole, then the tachycardia is originating from the sinus node region. There is a sinus node reentry. Um, uh, so the only, the only way to differentiate it is with the EP study. 
Very, very good question. You're right. Sinus stack, there is sinus reentry and the sinus stack. So kind of dual physiology there, not, not the physiology that, you know, but a dual um, trigger and mechanism, trigger or reentry. Is there uh, other questions? We have with us Dr. Audia, Professor Audia Yazid. Oh, yes, sure, Yazid. The, pre the Yazid. president of uh, Algerian Society of Rhythmology. He's a very good friend of mine. Uh, Yazid, one of, one of the... Yazid, Yazid. Uh, are you here? Do you hear Yazid? I don't know if uh, he's uh, still here or not. Is there other questions? Take this opportunity to ask questions to our friend, Dr. Ben Kouar, also is a rhythmologist, Riyadh. Nice. Nice Riyadh. No, my go inshallah, my next visit. I mean, I know uh, Yazid very, very well. He's a dear friend of mine. Um, and, uh, you know, I met uh, Lamia and, and, you know, others. And inshallah, we Lamia, can yeah. get an opportunity. Uh, the Burahla also. Burahla, Lamia. Yeah. So we, yeah, we get to meet, inshallah, in, in, in person, in, a, in the, inshallah, in the next uh, visit. And like I said, I, I hope. And please believe me, um, this is what I tell my students. Do you know how many times they teach me things? I love teaching. I have zero ego. I love my ego. I leave it outside. Well, I'm here. If you can. Uh, if, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the, only, the only way you, you grow. I mean, it's like it's always a fun session with our students. We discuss back and forth. And, you know, that's how you learn. That's how you grow. So I never sit here. I'm presenting to you. I want this to be a discussion. And hey, I want to learn too. So if something comes up during the way, and that's the best way to, to learn is teaching. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time. And I really, really want to continue foster this. And uh, hopefully this will be the beginning of um, a long, you know, collaboration or even working closely from, from this to right into producing some research or doing some ideas and we're you know I, I the only difference i feel i was given opportunity any one of you could be here and do better than me so i would just get an opportunity and uh, it's a responsibility that's how you look at it so the uh, if there is no, no As, question uh uh I hope that uh, our friend uh, Yazid, I, I, I guess he, he isn't here. So, if there is no question, we, uh, Barakallah, thank you very much for your uh, presentation. Uh, I hope it's the first one and uh, several uh, other uh, conferences, inshallah, in the in the next in next future. Inshallah. You know, the, one, one, one last thing, you know, it's okay, you, you know, if you didn't want to feel like talking today or whatever, for whatever reason, but I really maybe um, uh, feel free. I don't want to, I was going to ask you, uh, Salim, if you could do this for me, but I really wanted to come. I want people feel to feel, to feel kind of free to talk. And I need a feedback. Is this where we, where we had in, you know, where we had in with this, where we just, you know, Maybe form a small group of people that are interested in Rhythmia, maybe create a different platform or whether it's through very, WhatsApp or something. Very, very we can share EKD, we can share cases, we can prepare yeah. for this better. Yeah. Um, I don't want people to be here that they don't want to like, yeah, really just tell me just how do I stand this and get out? Why are you talking about this nonsense, potassium and calcium that's for somebody else? Uh, people but who wants to take this deeper, um, these, the, these are the people I'm interested in. I'm not exclude anyone of course but that great. feedback would be helpful great great very important thank you yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank I, you very uh, much and uh, you're next uh, next uh, inshallah conference salam alaikum um salam 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 alaikum salam alaikum